everybody, Jackie Cutforth with Rolling Hills Farm and today we are going to show you a really easy way to preserve your food. There's several ways you can preserve your food. One is to can them, the second would be to ferment them, to dry them, and lastly to freeze them. Now if you're going to freeze your vegetables, you, for most of them, you are going to have to blanch them first. If you don't blanch them, they are going to get a weird texture that just makes them not as palatable. Carrots, for instance, get really fibery and they just, they're not very pleasant to eat then. So we're gonna blanch them, but we're gonna show you a trick with blanching them, okay? The typical process with blanching would be that you would bring your water to a boil, put a layer of your vegetable in there, and then um, let it, once it comes to a boil, you start the time. So today we are doing cabbage. You would blanch cabbage for 90 seconds to two minutes. After, so you put your vegetables in, once it starts boiling, you start your time. Then you take the vegetables out, you um, put them in cold water, and then you have to get all the water out, and then you would put them on a pan and put this pan in the freezer. Now, that is wonderful, except for one thing, all that water. All that water makes a mess. It's not the biggest mess. You can be clean about it, but if you don't get it all out, when you put it on your pan, it will just become like a mass, solid mass. And so today, we have an easier method for you. Okay, this easier method is called steam blanching. So we have our little stock pot here, and in our stock pot we have a steam basket, okay? So the water is about to here, the steam basket is to here, so it holds the vegetables above the water so they don't get all wet. And then it's nice and easy because once they're steamed, you don't have to drain any water. You know, there might be a few drips, but you can just dump them right on to your pan. Now, if you do reading and stuff, they'll say that when you blanch them, you have to um, put the cold water on them. Excuse me. You have to put the cold water on them to stop the cooking process. I have been doing. This is not. This is like the last of our cabbage from this year. And I haven't been doing it that way. I'm just putting them directly on here and putting them in the freezer and it's turned out fine. I don't want to add any water to it. And I want to, we have a lot to process. So I want to make it as short and quick as possible. And the other thing is, is that you can only do as many pans as you have room for in your freezer. So some, you got to do this, you know, sometimes it might take a couple of batches. That's why we just fill up a big um, pot and our bowl and then we could get a few pans in and then we do it again. But that's nice too, so you don't get too overwhelmed with it. So now this is some Red Express cabbage and some green cabbage with, which was another miniature variety that, do you remember what kind it was? I can't remember. Golden Acre, I think. Golden Acre, okay. So these are a variety that is supposed to produce more quickly and they do and they produce abundantly. So the heads are smaller, like this would be a good size head, but they just do really, really well here. So we love them. And this purple cabbage is delicious. So this is Red Express cabbage. When you are preparing your cabbage to, you know, to chop it up so that you could blanch it, you just wanna make sure you have, um, you don't wanna have too big of pieces because the heat needs to get all the way in there. Um, to the center and so if you have big chunks that that's probably not going to happen as well so we like to do pieces that we know we're going to use ours for soups and stuff like that that they're going to be you know once they're blanched and once they're cooked they will be more bite-sized pieces and we won't have to do anything else with them so here we have the cabbage and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add it i am going to here's my little steam basket now if you don't have a setup like this, you can just put a colander right on top of your stock pot and that will work just as well. If you do want to go ahead and get a little setup like this, this is a Cook's um, little, it comes all together. It has the stock pot, it has another um, thing that goes in it for pasta that goes all the way down. 
and then this goes on top. It was very reasonably priced when I got it, and I will put the link in the description so that you can get one of these if you'd like as well. I really love it, and it's so helpful. So I am just going to load this up. And so we just process so much food. You know, we produce like 80% of our food, and I just have to make it go fast. I just have to do, like, of course we want it to be safe and healthy, but it also is like, okay, we got to do it quickly. Because also, there's so much. If we don't get it done properly, like with tomatoes, cabbage, you have a little bit more time, then it's going to go bad. So we just have to find the quickest way. So I am just going to fill this up, and the camera lady can show you. I've got it filled up there. The water is hot. It's already boiling. And I'm just going to put the lid on and I'm going to let it steam. Now, you don't want it to be, get all the way done, okay? You're thinking about maybe like halfway done or a third way done, just when it starts to get tender because the cooking process is going to finish once you get it out of the, the freezer and you put it in with your meal, whatever you're going to make then. So, just about halfway, a third to a halfway done. So, we'll let this cook and we'll see you back then. Okay, it's been about four to five minutes since we put it in here, and it is nice. It's just a little bit tender. Um, I tried it. It's really good. You can see how the colors change a little bit. So the next step is just really, really easy. We don't have to rinse it. We don't have to do anything. Um, that just takes more time. I had a little sample. It's so good. Okay, so I have my hands on the cutting board so it doesn't burn the counter, and I'm just going to simply dump this on the pan. It's so easy. don't have to rinse it. And you could. I mean, you could rinse this in cold water. Oh, sorry. There's my timer there. But it's so much easier this way. Okay? It's not necessary. You could put it in the freezer right like this. Now, I do let it cool off a little bit so I'm not putting it into the freezer like just steaming crazy like this. I don't want to thaw stuff in my freezer. But that easy okay I'm gonna have to put some of this on the other pan you don't want it to be on here too quickly let me get another spoon okay we're gonna put some of this on the other pan show you about how thick you want it now it you can see it's not completely dry there is a little bit of moisture in that you know there's natural um, naturally there's waters and stuff in the cabbage or any of your vegetables but it's not much. There's not the excess as you rinse it. And then, so what you do, we're going to just kind of spread it out. And then if it sticks just a little bit, it's really easy when you get it off the pan. You can just kind of, I usually just twist the pan and it comes right apart. So we'll be back in a few more minutes. Well, it's going to be a while for us, <laughs> but we'll get this frozen and then we'll come back and we'll just show you what it looks like once it's frozen. And I'll get into the container for freezing. While this, um, our cabbage is in the freezer, I thought I would show you this little um, recipe. This is, you know, many times people preserve all their food and then they're like, okay, now I don't know what to do with it. Like, how am I going to use it now? They're just so we are going to make ratatouille now it's not going to be as beautiful as a ratatouille with the nice little lined up slivers but this is another way that you can do it so we have these blanched um <laughs> zucchini and i'm just going to lay it out so this is going to be kind of like in layers okay i'm just lay out the zucchini these are whole tomatoes, okay? We just popped them in whole. The tomatoes, you can freeze them whole. You don't have to blanch them. It doesn't affect them at all. We've got some of our roasted tomatoes that we canned in the bottom. So all we did is we poured the roasted tomatoes in the bottom. You can add some minced garlic if you like. I know that my roasted tomatoes already have um, salt and pepper and garlic, so I'm not gonna add anything. I'm just gonna make it super, super easy and quick. Put all these on. Now, no, this is not going to win any prizes for some beautiful, you know, culinary creation. But it'll still be yummy and it'll be quick. And so for mommies that are busy and we don't have time 
and we have all this food we've preserved and we just want to sit and have a cup of coffee or maybe we're busy or we're just doing something fun with our kids this is a really easy way to do it so we have this we're going to add some peppers and some eggplant just layering it on top okay I grabbed the peppers I'm just going to sprinkle these peppers on now you see these were also frozen peppers but peppers you don't have to blanch okay you want to just put them on a pan though so they don't stick together cut them up put them on a pan freeze them and then put them in your whatever container you're going to use They smell so good. Peppers just always smell like pizza to me. Okay, now we have eggplant. Now this eggplant, we roasted it and then we froze it and <clears throat> it stuck together. We thawed it out, it's still a little bit frozen, but um, we did not put it on a pan like we should have after um, roasting it, even though it like, mm -hmm. There's no like liquids, it just seems dry. It still sticks together. So we're just gonna put this on. Like I said, it's not gonna be the prettiest, but you know what? It's still gonna be tasty. And it's gonna be quick and we don't eat out ever. We have really strict um you know diets to follow, no gluten, no GMOs, all organic, all these things, kosher, so there's just not an option for us anywhere to eat out. <laughs> There's my little helper. So it's nice to have something quick to do. This is like our fast food, our freezer meal, you because know, you know, I don't buy any processed foods either. This just be nice, simple, and quick. Now, is all I have to do is I'm going to put some more spices on it. Like I said, there's already spices in those roasted tomatoes that we have on the bottom that we can. So all of this, all of this is from our garden. Now, we can't make salt or pepper, but we do have our own basil on it, and um, often we have our own oregano and other herbs. So we're going to put that on it, and then we're just going to pop it in the oven at 400 degrees. So we'll see when that's done. with the finished ratatouille we're also getting some squash ready for some squash soup but here's the finished ratatouille you can see that it's a little bit juicier than regular ratatouille but it's still delicious it's still yummy you could put some breadcrumbs in there that would help um, soak up some of the juices or maybe if you wanted to in the layers sprinkle a little bit of um, coconut flour on it or maybe you wanted to put some ground meat in it just to make it um, for some more protein but it's so easy, doesn't take long, really a quick meal for when you have a busy day. And it's a good way to use all those things that you've preserved during your harvest season, all those things you've preserved, really easy recipe. So I hope you guys like this and we will be back here in a little bit with our frozen blanched um, cabbage. Okay, here we are with our frozen blanched cabbage. And so what I like to do is I just kind of do this with the pan a little bit and that usually gets most of it and then I use this little and you can see it just comes all apart really nicely individual little frozen pieces we can put it in our bag in the freezer now this is the only thing I don't like about freezing food is because we're putting it in a plastic bag I don't use plastic bags for anything else. I hate using plastic for anything. We have all glass Tupperware, but I have not found a better alternative for freezing stuff. And also, I mean, it's still using a lot less because we're not going to the grocery store. We're not getting their packaging. We're not doing all the fuel that way because this was grown right here and it's right in our freezer. So it makes me feel a little bit better, but if you have any better ideas, then please share. We are um, doing some, um, oh, somebody has to have a try. 
like freezer safe containers, but just glass doesn't work very good in the freezer. I've tried that too and we just end up breaking a lot. So here is though our blanched cabbage. Now you can use it for soup, for stir fries, for cabbage burgers, whatever your little heart desires. And it comes, now it'll come right out, you know, it can pour right out of the bag. Sometimes we'll fill this up all the way. We'll get another pan. But um, you just have to go like this a little bit, it'll come apart. Then you can just pour out what you need from the bag. So one way you can use less pa packaging is instead of doing like little individual portion bags, use the biggest bag possible because then you're going to use less plastic than if you had like four um, quart bags rather than one gallon bags. Those four quart bags are going to use more plastic than a one gallon bag and you can just pour a little bit out as you need it. So it's not a big deal. I hope you guys like this. I hope this is helpful for you. Make sure that you like, follow, and share. And we see we will see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.